how has Ingram reshaped itself to serve its customers in the changing publishing environment? Well, in Ingram, we've been reshaping ourselves for for a number of years. I mean, I my father died in 1995, and I inherited a book wholesaling company, and 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 since then we've we've gotten into um, started whole print on demand. I would say we almost started the industry for for true print on demand, mm. and have created all kinds of digital products as well. And really, Ingram is we've reshaped it from a traditional wholesaler of physical books to physical stores to more of a publishing industry services company, right. more broadly speaking. Okay. Um, as the industry changes, new skill sets are required to develop services and to sell more books. Can you touch on this a bit as it relates to Ingram and how you're leading the company? There are definitely new skill sets. Um, I, I like to say it's not my father's Ingram right. uh, in, in, in many regards. And um, we've really become pretty solidly a technology company, and that has required you know, new skill sets. I mean, some of them can be learned, some of them need to be recruited for. And um, you know, I'm really pleased, um, even though there's a lot of change that's going on, and, and change creates both risk and opportunities. And we've been, I think we've done a good job of seizing on the opportunities, and we've been quite successful in selling uh, people with the skill sets that we need to to on these opportunities mm -hmm. and you know last year we were um, we were um, um, one of the uh, rated as one of the top hundred companies by e content in terms of you know in uh, companies to look out for in the in the digital era and I'm, I'm particularly proud of that you know with a le with yeah. coming from a legacy that was anything but digital I mean we've right. we've really embraced both both you know we still have traditional physical things, but we've, we've certainly embraced, I think, the future. Mm -hmm. And as a major um, provide content provider, why is it important to keep a focus on both digital and print? Well, um, one of my executives a few years ago coined a phrase called, it's, an, it's not either or, we're really in an either and world. Mm -hmm. We want, as consumers, we've learned we want what we want, when we want, we, when we want it, where we want want it, how we want it, and right. and and so, you know, it. Um, I just got out of uh, one of one of your seminars and uh, on on Goodreads, mm -hmm. and it was it was very interesting to me that um, you know, forty or fifty. I forget exactly the question, but the preponderance of the answers are people read both, right. um, and you know, reading is um, it's both personal, um, and I think it's situational. And between, if you looked at a continuum between doing everything in the old legacy print world and, and everything um, in the new digital world, most of us are on that continuum, somewhere between those two extremes. Mm -hmm. And what are some of your newest, most exciting initiatives? Um, well, we, luckily we have, we have a number of them. But probably the, the biggest one is last year we made a, um, uh, we bought a, exclusive license um, to, I would say, the next generation of print-on-demand technology. It's really an automated, one-at-a-time automated uh, book manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. And we bought exclusive license for um, most of the major English-speaking countries. Uh, there are also two production facilities, one outside of New York in Edison, New Jersey, the other near, uh, just north of Cincinnati. And we're, we are in the, it's going to take us the better part of a year to really retool them and have them running as fast and as efficiently as, as we want them to. But it's a big part of, of our future, which we think is about being close to consumers. Mm -hmm. um, and to be able to produce and to distribute close to consumers is going to be really important. At the same time, I mean, we we've, we've do a number of things on the, on the digital side, um, both in the... Um, um, in the archiving and, and, and distribution to, to, we've got routes to uh, over 200 different um, environments where content's sold, mm -hmm. which we find publishers are pretty interested in selling their content. Um, and then we have a whole digital platform for that, that's an e-learning platform that started, believe it or not, in the dental school market, huh. but has, has become kind of the major, the major player in the online for-profit um, higher ed marketplace and, and through an arrangement with, uh, with Blackboard, we're moving fast and furious into the um, uh, two and four year not-for-profit not world. 
So um, we've got a lot of things that we're working on. Yeah. So for my last question, what does the publishing industry look like in five years? God, I wish I knew. Uh, <laughs> that'd make life a lot easier. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like. I think it's going to continue to be an environment in transition. Mm -hmm. um, I think it will continue to be about both physical and digital. Um, and I think it really is going to re require people, I mean, all the participants, we, we talk about being brave, not stupid. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a time for, for people who are brave and willing to take some, some calculated risks. Um, there's kind of no way around it. I mean, if you want to be a leader in this environment, you, you've got to make some calculated bets about the, about the future. And um, in my case, we're, we're doing it, and, and, I, and I'm, I feel very fortunate to have a good team that can help me kind of stay on the brave side and not fall off over into stupid. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much for sitting down with me today. Thank you.